Yes guys, it's Jando back with another video and today we're going to be looking at the top three plugins to improve your sound design in drum and bass. Let's get straight into it. Starting off with the first plugin and that is Decapitator. Now, Decapitator in short was designed to emulate an analog sound, but Decapitator is more than just an approximation of analog sound has the analog feel and responds to the dynamics of the audio that it passes through. Decapitator's analog style and modal tone control allows you to shape and contour different flavours of saturation. The sound of tubes, transistors and circuitry being pushed to the limit has long been the key ingredient in great sounding analog recordings. Engineers use saturation to beat things up, thin them out, give them the edge, add the warmth, pull elements out of the mix and create signature sounds. From the very subtle to the extreme, analog saturation is an integral part of great mixes. Let's have a quick look how I've used Decapitator on this drum and bass sound. So the drum and bass sound on its own sounds like this. This is a really cool sound and it has been processed in Serum already, but now we're going to add some post-processing and let's check out Decapitator. So with Decapitator on, it now sounds like this. There's a huge difference in tone and massive difference in definition. If we pull the capitator up here, we can see that I've boosted the drive all the way up to seven. I boosted the low cut and then I've pulled back on the mix just to blend that in a little bit with the original sound. And so here we're adding heavy saturation, but blending it into the original sound so it's not too overpowering. This is a great way of using Decapitator to mix in saturation and sort of heavy distortion into your sounds. The next plugin we're going to look at is Isotope Trash 2. Now with Trash 2, while the guitar is the instrument that typically comes to mind when thinking about distortion, Trash 2 can be effectively used on all types of tracks. You can add tape saturation to a vocal or acoustic guitar part, fuzz to a bass, overdriven compression to a drum beat. Trash 2 went beyond the typical distortion simulator in order to provide you with something that had the flexibility to be used on just about anything. When applying distortion to a track, several factors are involved in getting a good bad sound. Controlling dynamics is important for smoothing out distortion, adding sustain and simply gating out unwanted noise. Filters are the key ingredient for shaping the tone of the distortion, as well as for filtering out unwanted distortion and harmonics. And for the realistic overdriven sound, speakers and cabinets play an important part in naturally smoothing out the frequency and transient responses. In short, distortion by itself is only one part of the puzzle. Filtering, dynamics and speakers are the additional pieces for getting a perfect bad sound. With that in mind, Trash 2 is a collection of modules that compromise a complete distortion system. So let's take a quick look at how I've used Isotope's Trash 2 on this sound again. So we already remember what the sound sounds like before, but I'll play it again. And now with Trash 2. We can hear that over distortion and over saturation playing over the top of the sound now. It could do with being mixed in better, in my opinion, uh, but that's just on me. But yeah, this is another perfect plugin for saturation and distortion. Let's take a look at the interface here. It looks a bit of an eyesore when you first open it. It's very analog looking, very old school looking. But if we go over here, this is the starting page that you're going to be looking at. So to achieve this sound, we've gone on to saturate, tape saturation. We've boosted our shape here. We've also used the filter to duck the low end a little bit, just to control the tone. On here on stage two, we have the amp drain of distortion. And we've not touched the shaper and we've not touched the filter. This is just adding heavy distortion to our sound. And here we've mixed it in to make it sound a lot better. Overall, this sound could use a bit more and there's so much more you can do with Trash 2. As here we have individual filters, Trash, Filter 2, Convolve, Dynamics and Delay. There's so much you can use on this filter and it's a super, super sick one to improve your sound design and add that beefy, beefy bass. And lastly, the number three plugin is FabFilter Pro R. As one of the most used effects in the audio world, reverbs come in all forms and flavors, from convulsion processes to algorithmic models and emulations of vintage classics. You might have tried them all. 
While convulsion reverbs may sound convincing, they are not very flexible and often so dense that it's difficult to make them fit in a mix. On the other hand, many algorithmic reverbs are not dense enough, sound artificial or offer so many technical options that they are simply too difficult to set up. A high quality algorithmic reverb should sound natural or vintage, has enough density and still sits in the mix perfectly without causing undesirable correlation or phase problems. At the same time, it should not confuse you with the over technical controls and too many options, but must be easy to set up and a joy to work with. With FabFilter Pro R, they have created just that. Let's take a look at some examples of this with this bass. So we still remember what it sounds like previously before any post processing. So with FabFilter, it sounds like this. <laughs> In my opinion, Fab Filter, with the majority of my bases, completely transforms them. Let's take a quick look at how I've used Pro R with this bass. So if we look here, I've used the EQ to take off that low mid section of the reverb, and I've pulled back the mix as well as the space to make the space less obnoxious and a lot more tight. This is my preferred way of using Pro R. It adds that extra tone to the bass, the nice stereo width, and it just beefs it out in general. This is a super sick plugin for adding sick reverb, beefing out your mix, and overall adding that extra bit to your bases. So that there was my top three plugins to help you with your sound design. If you're looking for more videos like this and want to improve your drum and bass production, then head over to my Patreon. I offer loads of content on there that will help you advance in drum and bass production. Alternatively, if you're looking for samples or presets similar to the sound that we use in this video today, head over to jandodnb.com. I've got tons of products on there, so go check them out. Nice one.